Yeah, but well, we gotta we gotta we gotta sexy up the studio. What? <laughs> so, so we're not yeah, 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 no, right now we're not publishing Sal's private life. What are you talking about? Just let's all screen. pump some iron. That's sexy <laughs> exactly. enough. Exactly. Yeah, I know. There's enough weights for everyone. <laughs> Turns into gay porn. Not <laughs> <laughs> just sweat. That is when I'm heading home. I actually, I don't That's find that funny. Porn, why, why would lifting weights be gay porn? Why is that so funny? It's men being physical. I mean, yeah, women aren't the primary I'm, consumers of pornography. Men are. It's a I, fact. We never, we we know, we, yeah, we never we're, even we're working, we're working our way in there because we're talking about sex. You education. assume that lifting weights, lifting weights yeah. is what? gay. What? <laughs> Stop the topic is that what it is? Our, we're, we're gonna, oh, is if you lift, uh, the, uh, if you lift, if you lift, you're I'm gay. Tired for this. Is that what is that what the conclusion you you're like coming to? Watch men who get <laughs> lift, you're gay. Oh, but if you they lift, get. you're gay. <laughs> no. Okay. That does that, that that's an un, that that doesn't correlate at all. Oh my balls! But if you're making a video to be watched by men, that could be gay. Oh goodness! The men who watch it could be gay. So many rules. Could be. You know, it's, it's a fluid. Uh, it's a, it's God, very fluid. Baby, shut up. <laughs> oh, why haven't you begun to talk? This is my favorite subject. Oh, my God. <laughs> Thank God I'm running this. Welcome to the Crew Roundtable Podcast. Brought to you by CrewRoundtable.com. A roundtable discussion of all the hot news affecting the greater Toronto area. Featuring Big V, Marco, Gino, and JR. And now your host of the Crew Roundtable, the champ who runs the camp, Sal Champ. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome listeners, welcome to the Crew Roundtable. I'm your host, Sal Champ, and uh, let me just introduce... The round table I have with me today, the panel. Uh, as usual, I have Marco. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. Big V. Giggity. All right. Uh, please keep it down. Uh, Gino. Thank you once again, Chan, for having us in your beautiful home here. Uh, this is going to be surely an explosive episode. Uh, <laughs> it will rival our uh, discussion on the 416 uh, or on the tolls on the DVP, I'm oh, sure. For sure, if you pace yourself. Um, <laughs> JR. <coughs> welcome. Thank you, Sal. Uh, thank you, Champ. Uh, it's going to be a long, hard episode. But oh, we'll, get, we'll get to it. We'll get through it. Okay. And I just we'll caught whiff it. of an air biscuit, but I'm going to ignore it. Uh, our special guest, special Don't guest panelist, uh, Enza. <laughs> Welcome, my sister. Welcome for joining us on the crew roundtable. Welcome. Enzo. Hello. Enzo, why are you covering your face? I hope this wasn't your air biscuit. <laughs> no, it because because the last person who got who got caught with the air biscuit it went, wasn't me. was this was the champs right. Right on right. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we're going to kick off this topic here. So um, before you go, I just want to remind everyone that you can reach us. Uh, all our episodes are at crewroundtable.com. You can tweet us at, at crewroundtable, hashtag ask the crew if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. So to kick off this episode, we the subject is the Ontario Sex Education Curriculum, uh, the updated uh, curriculum, that is. And I'm going to hand, uh, hand it over to uh, Gino to kick it off. Thank you very much, Champ. Uh, the framing of our discussion here is going to be, is the Ontario government revised on sexual education curriculum appropriate for all students? And then we are going to transition into what options are there for parents in the GTA, whether they agree or disagree. Uh, so let's uh, put some context on this. Uh, so 2016-17 is the first year that the revised Ontario sex education curriculum is being taught at all levels in all schools in the province of Ontario. Um, there was sort of a mini pilot somewhat program. Um, it was taught in the last two weeks of the prior school year. However, that was after report cards were finished and nothing was actually graded. So it was just, here's your first taste of what's coming. Uh, now we are in the thick of things. Now we are in uh, the 
actual meat of the issue. Students have had six months, roughly, where they have been getting the new curriculum, uh, and parents have had a chance to see this curriculum. Um, it is an incredibly hot topic. We discussed the hot news. This is a hot topic. Um, so let's start with just some facts to frame our discussion. Um, some websites out there have put forth a uh, summary of the major topics that people are taking issue with on this curriculum as it is being taught to Ontario students. And these are our students starting from grades 1 to grades 12 in Ontario. So that's from ages roughly 6 to 18. Okay, so they're taught different things each year. Uh, some of the highlights of the new curriculum, which is what has people up in arms and people think that the sky is falling in. Okay, um, Grade 3, uh, gender identity is taught as a social construct. Uh, you can pick to identify what your gender is. So this is grade three, so simply add six. So we're talking about uh, eight or nine-year-old children um, are being taught that your, your gender identity is somewhat fluid. Um, grade three again, uh, there is mention of heterosexuality, or sorry, of homosexuality and alternative family structures, such as two mothers, two fathers. Um, that is, according to the critics, being pushed through and being normalized at the age of nine years old or eight years old. Uh, grade four, so 10-year-olds, are being taught uh, about dating. Uh, grade six, uh, so 12-year-olds, are uh, being taught that uh, masturbation is not harmful. Um, and finally, in grade eight, uh, students... So grade 8, so this would be a year before students go into high school. Uh, the official curriculum states, uh, keep a condom with you just in case. So these are, now I'm, I'm, I'm not putting any judgment on these items. I'm just framing them as fact. These are the recommendations and the examples that are given. Now, I will be honest with everyone here. The actual document itself is 250 pages. I, hmm. didn't, I did not read it. Okay. The curriculum, the the curriculum, yes, because yeah, it's 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 a, it's a fairly it's dense a guideline. Yes, yeah, that makes sense. So not only do they give what they want to teach, but as a lesson plan, they give examples on how to teach it. They give examples on possible student teacher dialogue that comes back and forth. So a lot of what I've just read has been taken from the proposed possible dialogue that may take place between student and teacher. We, got, we have to keep that in the back of our minds as we discuss this issue. Um, that's what has people pretty much up in arms. Now, the legitimacy of their concerns... Uh, I would be looking at this because my children will more than likely be going through the Catholic education system. Um, there are three different streams of education here in Ontario. For those who are not aware, we've got the public system, we've got the Catholic system, and then we have a private system. Uh, and they all handle the curriculum in somewhat different ways. Uh, the way that the Catholic system is going to handle these issues, I can speak about that later. Um, but these are the main topics that people have an issue with. They feel that it's incredibly age-inappropriate. Um, and I don't want to dominate the discussion by giving my views, so I'm going to throw that out on the table. Whoever wants to chime in, go ahead. Uh, I'll, I think I'll take the ball on this one. Uh, now, I will disclose I do not have children, but I did go through as a child as, uh, edu the, the sex education that we received in the 80s in, high, in grade school and, uh, and during the early 90s in high school. And during grade school, all we learned was what happens to a baby once it's been fertilized? Well, all we learned was nine months of con nine months of embryo development. That, and that was in what, grade that, seven and eight? Seven and eight, that exactly. Was, that was what you received for That's education? That's all I taught in a Catholic yeah. grade school. That's all I learned. Yep. We went through a much very, we went through a very different experience then. Yeah. It, 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 it no, was no, a, no. It, I it mean, a, no, I mean, myself and you mm -hmm. went through a much different experience because in my grade school, 
We learned about, in grade 7 and 8, we learned about things such as oral sex. Wow, no, they didn't talk about anything on how the baby even happened. They did in your, not even in your t- grade school, really? Yep, I swear to God. So maybe these reforms I, I, are good? You know, I think back then, yeah. the regulating of how this, this stuff is taught wasn't, I guess, as, as how do I say it, um, uh, enforced heavily as, I guess, they are enforcing it now. Um, I guess it was very dependent on the teacher. Uh, it was a little more. Day. It seems see, like, yeah, person, because see, given, our, given our difference of experience, it, yeah. seems, it seems that you... Um, your teachers kind of skipped over a lot of things. Yeah, they did. My teachers jumped right to the meat and potatoes. See, the, 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 a lot of the problem. A lot of the <laughs> your problem teacher's is gonna be a sex addict, want, for all we know. See, the problem is my no, teacher in grade eight was actually some hippie who didn't even have a teacher's license. But that's uh, a story for okay. a different time. Anyway, that's, that's a, the, the 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 major problem that surrounds sex ed is nobody wants to talk about it. Okay. Um, there's a logical fallacy that if we start explaining to kids that sex exists, they're suddenly going to go and do it. Wait, wait, which stream are you directing this? It's, it's a, it's a, no, it's a general across-the-board criticism. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Of the three streams that we have, public, Catholic, and private, is your critique directed at all of them? Yes. Okay, so that's yes, because, not true. Because, it's, it's, it, because there is dissent across all three streams. <clears throat> Let me finish my point. Okay, go ahead. That has been an age-old complaint. If we talk about it, it's going to be implied as permission. They're going to start doing it. And, you know, no good can come of that. I think people forget what it was like to be kids. Hormones drive you. And fair enough, pre-95, when we didn't have the internet... It might have been diff- more difficult to get uh, to get pictures of sex and pornography and to find out what it was like. But now it's widespread. You, that genie is out of its bottle. You don't have to tell kids what it's like for them to know what's going on. All right. And, and you know, I remember the, I remember there was an episode of nine uh, of nine hundred two one zero Beverly Hills nine hundred two one zero back in the early nineties. The episode was about putting condom dispensers in the school. And the same stupid argument came up again. The one line that came out of it, if you have a pool in your backyard, you can put a fence around it, you can put a cover to it, and you can tell your kids not to go near the pool. But if you want to make sure your child doesn't drown in the pool, you teach that kid to swim. Okay? You cannot wait until kids are raging hormones to teach them what sex is like, which... If the, and then the parents are complaining that they should be the ones teaching them. If parents were at, across the board adequately teaching kids about sex, this curriculum wouldn't be needed. Okay? You have crea- parents who are primarily complaining about this, all they want to do is tell the kids not to have sex, and they'll, they'll magically figure it out when it's time to have sex. You don't figure it out. Because pornography is not an instruction manual, and that's where they're going to learn it. And pornography is not as instruction manual. No more so than I can watch an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie and suddenly know how to fly a plane. That because that's the logic there. You you know, pornography is made it is primarily made for angry men. And a lot a lot of pornography is aimed at men that don't like that hate women. If you watched a bunch of porn, he's like, man, these people really fucking hate women. Women are not treated very well in porn. Uh, there's unhealthy practices in porn. M- majority of porn does not use protection. You do not learn how to have sex in porn. You, you learn how to have porn style intercourse in porn. Are you sure you want to talk about pornography on this topic? It, 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 it's 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 the primary. It's one of the things that this this uh, that this uh, edu- sexual education is trying to is trying to combat. Uh, okay, so before you go any farther, they, they, the, they talk about they, because. Do you know the author of this sexual education curriculum? He was not the primary author. Yes, there was one person involved that was arrested for child pornography, and he was he was put in jail. No one, but he was not the only one written writing this. I don't even think he had any input directly into the curriculum. The curriculum does not make people vulnerable. The, the curriculum is part of the curriculum is to make you less vulnerable, because. By, ter- t- by teaching kids, first they start teaching kids 
what the words of their genitalia are. None of this PP or VVs or whatever. Penis and vagina. Yeah, that then, I, I couldn't then, understand why people have an issue with that. Then, the, the, as they get older, they start to teach you what appropriate and inappropriate touch is. And between the and how you should not to be afraid of your parents because the when se- sexual abusers the first thing they do is they they tr- they teach the kids that they're going to be yelled at by their parents, and they create this fear and that and, and that, that's part of what so they're trying to keep the kids from being able they, they teach the kids that they are able to talk to their parents and their teachers about this without fear, you know there's there's talk about there's t- they, they teach about consent what is allowed how to talk to pe- how to, how to talk to your partner about what they do and don't want part of this is about sexting and how and, and the consequences and the permanence of of pictures on the internet they try to keep people they're trying to they primarily they don't teach kids how to have sex do not believe the lie that this is prostitution class there is no instruction on how to have sex there's instruction on how to have safe sex, what you, the options you have, there, but nobody's teaching how to do anything. There is no instruction. Nobody's watching porn. Nobody's giving classes. There's no teaching of the actual intercourse. Okay, they are teaching you how to how to say how to, how to properly and healthily approach sex, because as much as you want to pretend kids don't know about it because you didn't tell them about it, they know about it. It's all over the place. TV shows it. I don't, the internet's I, got it all over the place. I don't you think cannot that's pretend right. it's they're, not here. They're teaching form and function. How can they go through and tell you what a penis is and tell you what a vagina is, but then not tell you what you do with them? They couldn't go that far. I think, that, I think they had to realistically stop, cut short. Because if they were actually teaching that, then the parents would absolutely go ballistic. It would be worse than it is now. But they are teaching people about anal sex. They're not teaching how to do it. They're, 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 simply, prevent, they're pre- simply presenting it as, as an alternative method, but they don't actually teach you how to do it. So they just tell it, they just say that there's something called a- anal sex. But yeah, not, exactly. There's no you can use your act, of... the, Just like when they talk about masturbation, they don't actually teach you how to masturbate. They just throw the word out there. But isn't that confusing? It's very confusing, but they, unfortunately there's only so much they could really do. It's it's not the perfect curriculum, but it's a le- it's it's a leap forward. It's a, it's a significant jump forward. It's it light is, years ahead of what we had before. It is better. Yes. And I'm I'm shocked at the experience that you had in grade school mm-hmm. that you did not get the same discussion that I had in grade school because I thought everyone had that same discussion in grade school. Like well, my yeah. teachers were somewhat explicit. Um in talking about sexual health, in talking about reproduction, in talking about acts themselves. Um, when uh, Now, for those people who are listening in the listenership, myself and JR went to the same high school, which was a Catholic school in the private system. Uh, so I'll let you speak to the experience that we had. Yeah. Uh, and my, 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 high, my grade school experience may, may be non-typical because in grade 8, my, my grade school teacher broke her leg. She was out for the whole year. And the substitute teacher could, all, could do only what he could do to keep that class from burning the school down. It was ridiculous. So uh, I, I stress that we may not be, it may not be completely typical. Uh, high school, uh, sex ed was taught in gym class. We did about a week of it. It was primarily focused on disease. Not disease prevention, but I remember being assigned uh, an STI. I think I did mononucleosis. Uh, and we had to create a brochure about it. But uh, when we, the, the only class where we talked about uh, birth control was in a religion class. And they actually brought some woman in from outside to tell us how birth control really doesn't work very well. And promote the rhythm method, which is basically you try to have sex unprotected, mind you. Uh, when a woman is in her non-fertile states, and don't, uh, I, I, don't I wish I wish forty-year-old me could teleport my mind to high school me, and I, I would just bury that teacher. Don't forget the abortion video. I don't remember. I didn't see the abortion. I, we didn't get the abortion. You video. didn't see the abortion video. No. Who did you have teaching you, Father Zinger? 
Okay, so for if, those... if it was Zinger, I can get. I totally believe you. I had Fisher. Okay, so Fisher. I don't think it had it was forty. It was in his late forties. I don't think that guy even touched a boob in his life. Okay, a breast. So, sorry, yeah. breast. That's not. The, that's not, this isn't. Uh, this is an eighties law law firm that uh, law firm show that promoted the word vajayj. What show? Was it, what show said that? Ali McBeal. Uh, Ali McBeal. Yeah. Forty and fifty year old women women could not even say the proper word for their own bodies. Yep. Disgusting. Uh, for those who don't know, the abortion video that we are discussing is literally that. It is a video of what happens when a baby is killed in the womb. Uh, it shows you the process by which the uh, baby is crushed and vacuumed out of the womb and then discarded in the medical waste bin. So it's highly graphic. It's highly controversial. I'm surprised that you didn't see it. I'm surprised that they showed it to us mm -hmm. well, in school. That, 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 and that's a bit of an exaggeration because that is a late-term abortion, which constitutes less than 1% of all abortions. But this is not an abortion topic. Correct. I don't, I don't know if abortion is even referenced in the, in the curriculum. Um, there was no mention made of it as part of the hot button topics in the literature. Yeah, so I have a funny feeling they, they had to realistically push the push the topic only as far as they could go. I think it's I so think they, it's they focused stop, primarily stop on, short on human sexuality. They, I think, they, they I, think their I think their intention was to prevent the need for having abortion to begin with, because it's 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 not a great procedure. I'm not, you know, as 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 an as as a pro choice advocate, you don't want to have to make that choice. It's not an easy choice. And anything you can do to prevent that scenario of occurring is always a good thing. Mm -hmm. It seems mm -hmm. that most of the hot button topics relate to either inappropriate age mm -hmm. or there's quite a lot on the gender issue. Gender seems to be also one of the main topics because of the teaching where gender is fluid, where gender is your choice, where gender involves a self-identification, mm -hmm. where the outward expression of your body is not tied to your gender. And teaching that at a very young age, one of the main criticisms is teaching that at the grade three or four level to children um, introduces unnecessary complexity into their lives when they are not even sexual beings yet at that point and they are given almost license to say, well, I may look like a girl, but I'm a boy. Um, that, I think, is the... That's, that's one of the main things that people are railing against when it comes to this new curriculum. Um, I have to say, I agree with JR. This new curriculum is something that I think is needed. Um, things have changed just from the availability of information that children are able to view on their own. Uh, you know, we can blame the boogeyman internet all we want, but there are more questions that need to be answered at a somewhat earlier age. They may overstep and go too far in the other direction and maybe treat some or present some items which are to children that are too young to fully grasp and understand them. Mm -hmm. Well, um, they are right, though. They, 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 the intent to, to, to the intent for this in curriculum is to normalize certain things. It is when you're teaching it to someone on a large scale, you're normalizing it. No, I'm not disagreeing with that, but I think you need to 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 get into the into kids' heads that these ideas are okay before they themselves have to struggle with them. Like if you listen to a lot of coming out videos, a lot of um, you know public speaking about people who are gay or transgender. A lot of the a lot of a lot of the stories, the common thread is that when they were kids and they started feeling attractions to the people of their same sex, they felt weird. They felt like monsters, and all they wanted to do was push it down because they didn't want to be different. So you've got to you've got to catch these kids when they're receptive and before they're going through these changes. You know, you can't learn to drive a car while you're driving a car. You have to learn. You, you have to. You have to learn your body before the changes happen, so you realize, oh, this is what's supposed to happen. 
right? You, you just like you teach someone when you go through an intersection, you know, this is what's going to happen and this is what you do. Well, you teach someone, you teach the kids about your about puberty and and hormones and and their way of thinking. It's like, oh yeah, we heard, we learned about this. This is okay, and this is what I need to do. Let's let's hear from some of the uh, parents here. Champ, Tito. You know what? I've I have not read the curriculum, so I'm gonna I'm gonna be learning this thing as as my child children progress through. But you have grades, you so. you have one child that's in the system right now. She's in grade one, uh, two. Grade that's, two, that, okay. That's, so that's, right, this, that's right. right in the beginning. Yeah, that's. I mean, so they're, starts, gonna, they're gonna start getting they get starts, education. Yeah. yeah, but it's yeah. low level, you know. You, yeah, you learn about your body. You yeah, learn, you learn about cleaning yourself. You know. Yeah. There, there's not a lot of dirty things, and, yeah. and and your body, and at the end of the day, your body isn't a dirty thing. Yeah. You yeah. know. Yeah. It's how we were made. You know, it's just you have to do things in the right way and correctly uh, when you're interacting with other people. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. So you don't have any opinion about the author of this curriculum? You don't have any opinion on how it came to be? When you, um, say, when you say author, do you mean the head of the whole education ministry thing? Well, it was started with the, when the current premier was not the current premier. Right. Right. It was her project from 2010. Right. And then she brought it back now. Right. As the Grand Poobah and made it official. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, you don't have any issues about, you don't have any reservations about things that may be taught? And really, I think it boils down to the age appropriateness because everything that they're teaching, aside from some of the normalized, of some of the items that may be trying to be normalized more as opinion and not based in fact, which are few, but 99% of what they're teaching is sound. Yeah. From okay. what I've seen. 99% of what they're teaching makes sense. Right? So did you go through or did you just get a summary of... So I looked at, <coughs> I looked at the summary and then I went back and I looked at what they actually cover at each age. So there are four main things that they cover in each grade. The sex ed is only one quarter of what they cover. Some of it deals with health. Some mm -hmm. of it deals with abuse. Yeah. Some of it deals with um, um, authority figures. Some of it deals with being comfortable with your own body and learning specific terms, such as Jared was saying, calling yeah. something by its proper name instead of making up some slang term for it. Right. right? So the actual sex ed portion is only about a quarter of the overall curriculum it's just that that's where the hot buttons are mm -hmm. right um the uh from the three streams where it's going through and how it's being taught from my own personal experience and reading the information that the catholic school board puts out on teaching this curriculum because they are teaching this curriculum this is put out by the government. If they want funding, they have to teach this curriculum. Yeah. Uh, JR can, I mean, we, were we in the same, we were in a lot of the same science classes as well. Yes, we were. Right? Yeah, we were. Chem, biology, things like that. Definitely chem. Yeah. Biology, of, I, biology I think we were too. Yeah, the second, Physics. Yeah. So we were in a lot of the hardcore science classes. And you would think that coming out of the, if you were to put the context today about teaching the theory of evolution, teaching the theory of natural selection, you would not think that a Catholic institution would do justice to that. Mm -hmm. we, we were not even taught natural... Uh, um, um, what's the... What's, what, what's, what's the... What's the uh, creationism. Yeah, we were not creationism. taught creationism. Um, our, bio, our, our science classes were hardcore science classes. And the Bible was not taught as literal truth either. Correct. We did a, we did a Bible study course. Nobody ever said that the, the creation myth, myth was real. No one ever said it had any sign, mm -hmm. sort of realistic timeline. They presented it as a primitive group of people that needed some sort of coherent story to explain the unexplainable. And that's, that was about it. That's about as far as they said, that's exactly the way they said it. And the way that it, the way that it was explained was in, in harmony with 
the Catechism of the Catholic Church, which at that time was a new book. Now it's old. But at that time it was something new put forth by the Pope at that time. Uh, you're free to believe that the creation myth is literal. You're free to believe that there were two people named Adam and Eve who started humanity. You're also free to believe that it's somewhat an allegorical story. Because it's not history. That story is not a historical document. But the, the, the Catholic Church doesn't present it as historical it doesn't either. So it's they're kind open of, to they you are, they, to interpret. You well, can yeah, say they, 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 you, it's there is, there you is, can interpret it, but they are following one side of it. They are clearly leaning somewhere. That Who? it's teaching you something. This, the church does not teach oh, it's Adam teaching, and Eve. Yes, it's there, teaching, there is a story it's saying that it's, it. it's teaching you something, yes. but this is not hard history. Exactly. And it does not conflict with teaching evolution. We never got any mix of that. Mm, yeah. There was no bullshit about it being a theory. There was no thing. Science was taught honestly as science, and religion was actually taught fairly, religi- fairly honestly as religion. Mm-hmm. There, was, there was never any of this... Uh, evolution is just a theory in scare quotes, and the science is out. We did hardcore science. Oh yeah, hardcore oh, yeah. science. Right down to genetics. Exactly. And I mean, a monk uh, was the godfather of genetics. Mendeleev was a monk. Exactly. And and many other monks also put forth many of the advancements in astronomy. Uh, 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 who was the the uh, Ptolemy? Put the sun at the center. Took the mm-hmm. earth out of it. Right. Uh, to this day, the Vatican has the Vatican astronomy, or the uh, the uh, chief of science for the Vatican is a respected scientist. They investigate these things, okay? And when it comes to what you can do as a parent, I would strongly encourage everyone, even if you're not Catholic, put your kid into a Catholic school. Because the way that they teach this curriculum is one of the most level-headed and rational ways that I can see them teaching this curriculum. Because the curriculum in the public school, if you look at just the bare bones of the curriculum, it's very reductionist. <coughs> it's, everyone is just a uh, sum total of body parts. Mm-hmm. Uh, the bishops of Ontario, they put a schema over that. And they teach what's not in the curriculum. They teach something a little bit extra where it comes to respecting your body because there's a power that's greater than you. They teach that, yes, people were created male and female for a reason. There are some people who may have confusion, but there's a reason (coughs) why it's predominantly male and female. Um, You can go down the list of all the the items. Um, The Catholic system actually tries to engage things that are glossed over, such as same-sex attraction. They try to engage that because they put a value on human life, no matter what life that is. Mm. To the but Catholic they, Church... Do they present it in a negative light, though? No, no, no. What they, because you have to understand where the Catholic Church is coming from, right? Everybody is a sinner, and they are redeemed by the cross, right? Mm-hmm. Everyone is the same. If you have... Same sex, same sex attraction. It's the same as having opposite sex attraction. At some point, the Catholic Church is going to come to you and say, you're not ready to engage in any sex whatsoever, no matter what kind of attraction you have. But the difference is, right? opposite sex attraction eventually gets a green light. And in the Catholic Church, the same sex attraction never gets that green light. Yes. And the reason for that is because the Catholic Church comes out and they have a particular worldview. Now, the reason why they are able to teach this Ontario curriculum is because, as we've said, 99% of it is just good science. Mm-hmm. And, and, and for the Catholics, uh, right? abstinence is part of the curriculum. It's, it's, uh, it's, what, it's part they, of it. They even right. say, you don't have to have sex. And, and actually, they're, they're really just, t- a lot of it's telling you to wait. Yep. The, 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 the push is, you know, it, you, you might want to wait as long as possible before you start having sex. It, it's healthier for you. So it's presented, and it's not just glossed over as a two-line two item. I mean, putting the option that it's your body, and if you don't want to do anything, you don't actually have to do anything. So if your girlfriend or boyfriend are, uh, are, are pushing you to do stuff you don't want to do, it's your body, and you can take fully control of it. The, uh, the private schools who choose not to teach this curriculum, I think they're doing themselves a disservice. 
especially to the students. Especially to the students, because overall, it's a good curriculum. It's actually well thought out. Apart yeah. from these five, six items that we went through at the beginning, where really you're just dealing with age inappropriateness, you're not actually having an issue with those items. You're just really upset about how old the students are when they're being taught that. And that can be debated because diff- you know, different That can students, go back yeah. and forth. That can, that exactly. can, those are, you know, that's the devil in the details that you can always revise going mm-hmm. on. But this curriculum as a whole is pretty good. Mm-hmm. And the Catholic bishops, they have their, they have their source. Uh, they have their uh, schema, which I said they put on. They have a resource available to Catholic teachers to go through this curriculum with them. Um, it's really the private denominational schools that I think are losing out because they choose not to address these issues at all. Mm-hmm. And, and, and please don't believe the myth that it, this was done in secret without consulting parents. A lot of parents were consulted on this. It's been, it's, it's it, been it, around for half a decade at least. Like the Parents are definitely involved. They didn't ask every single parent. This is true. How are you going to ask 500 million parents their opinion on uh, on a curriculum. It's not possible. They they selected ch- parents from all walks of life to get an even ba- because they knew they they had to deal with conservative and liberal parents. Parents were cons- were they, this is not a backdoor deal. They don't announce every curriculum. When was the last time you you were you were con- you, you were you, you were consulted on the math curriculum or the science curriculum? Never. How they pick it, I'm not quite sure. I'm sure, they, I'm sure they've got a method of, of volunteers. And it's funny that you bring up math, because math is one of those things where... Now, I don't have a child in the system yet, okay? But math is one of those things where people have absolutely no qualms about saying, I'm just not good at math. Yeah, I right. don't. I don't care. I don't know about it. I don't want to know about it. I don't want to deal with it, Okay. But apparently, that's not the same for all subjects equally. That's correct. Which I find ridiculous. Because saying, well, I'm not good at math, and I don't care about it, and I don't want to do anything to it, this is grade school math. Mm-hmm. You morons. You should be able to do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And right? you know what? You should be able to help your child with math. Until they get to high school and they start doing trig and algebra and whatever the hell, calculus and whatever they need to do, you should be able to help your child with their homework, no matter what they bring home, whether it's sex education homework, whether it's math homework, whether it's geography, whether it's finger painting, you should be able to help your child until they get into high school. You should be able to help your child with their homework. You should be engaged with them, which again, comes back to why I think the Catholic board has this right. They involve the parents as part of their schema to teach this. It's not just left in the classroom. Part of it is to have the children go home and engage their parents on this teaching and say, this is what we believe as a Catholic faith. These are the reasons behind it. Here's the ammunition that you have to have an intelligent discussion with someone about this in the real world. So that's why I think that they do that correct. And you know what? I think we've got this mentality that it's it, it's re- weird or creepy to talk to your parents about sex. Sure, you don't want you don't it want is, to, it is somewhat. It is if you mm-hmm. st- it is if you wait until they're fourteen. Yes, it's super creepy, and yeah, you don't want the mechanics. <laughs> but if you don't start if you don't start from a young age that the, your that your kids are can come to you safely and tell you what's going on, they're not going to just magically start coming to you at, at fourteen. And, and if you've and if all you've done is shut down their conversation then don't think they're magically going to tell you when it's time to tell you. It's not going to happen. Yep. This, is, this is a learning opportunity for parents as much as it is, as much as it is for, 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 for children, especially if you come from a more conservative culture where you didn't get this kind of education yourself. Maybe you are unfortunately burdened by your own social taboos. You know, my... My, when we were doing sausage together, my grandmother still believes that a woman shouldn't be handling food if she's on her period. You know, this is the kind of stuff we took from our old, they took from the old country. Wow. You know? Yeah. It was ridiculous. Um, so this could be a, a time to learn of yourself and realize that sex isn't evil. 
your body is not inherently evil, you know, and, and, you, and, and you can make choices. There's too many people who are stuck in thinking that the good old days were perfect. They were perfect if you were a white guy. Everyone else, everyone else on that list probably has a pretty, I, you know, just brought that topic. There's a reason why time travel is only a male uh, fantasy. The further back in time, when, when would a woman go back any further in time than now? I mean, so t I think teaching this curriculum is uh, important. Choosing at what age to introduce what topic, difficult choice. Mm -hmm. uh, not, Im not, not impossible, but difficult. Difficult. Yes. Uh, I, I could say, you know, impossible because not every six-year-old is ready to hear X statement, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you're never going to have a curriculum that's going to serve everyone equally as well. There's no perfect system. That's right. That's but right. that's not an excuse not to use it, not Correct. to try. To try and get incrementally better. Yeah. Yes. The, what, the real sad part is that these topics need to be addressed as early as I feel that they do. What do you mean? For what Benny was saying about the fact that, you know, pornography is so easily accessible to, you know, whatever ch or whatever age children. I mean, one of the main reasons that you have to kind of address all these things in school with adults that you trust in a curriculum is because the world's changed and children are exposed to stuff earlier than mm -hmm. they should be exposed to. Mm -hmm. So this mm -hmm. is this is this is probably the appropriate response to that sad fact. I agree with you on that. Uh, they have unfettered access. Um, if you're a parent and you give your 12 year old child a cell phone, you're asking for trouble. Like even, a, even if you don't, there's like, there's access, like and, and you're, I worry about there's the only generation, so much you can stay ahead of it. Like I worry about the generation of boys who are exposed to pornography at the age of ten, and yeah. they see that. That that's uh, that's going to be dangerous. And these are the boys who are going to interact with my daughter. Yeah. With, so with both of them. Right. That's right. Both. You got so, two. So. <laughs> Did you forget about one? So, you got two. One hasn't come out yet. So my mind is very happy that this is going to be taught in schools because I'd like to hope maybe they can do it better than I can. Yeah. Uh, but it really hurts me in my soul to think that it needs to be done. Hmm. Uh, it, it, can't, it, it, it struck me a couple of years ago. Uh, Big V was having a party. And our friend Paul was there. It was it was a summer party. Okay. Oh, it was yes. it wasn't a Christmas party. It was a summer party, and and Paul and his his, his, his now ex wife were there. Uh, I think he was substitute teaching at that time. He might have been. Um, Paul? It was, no. 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 Okay. Then Paul never did. But that. Big V did. Paul, I did. Okay, Paul. So it came to the comment where. Paul, where Paul thought it was appropriate that if a girl had her skirt up too too high, that it, if she got her ass pinched, it was her fault. Should have lowered should have lowered the skirt. Mm -hmm. This is no. This is classic. Like if your if your parent thinks this, how are you how are you not going to think this? You know that the onus is not on the victim. Like you know, and and and, and the sad thing is, he has two boys. And this and this and this, and this ideology is going to permeate to his boys, you know, and unfortunately I didn't have the tools to debate him properly at that time. But uh, you know, and to you know, realistically, anything is attra Any level can be attractive, and it can't always be the. It's not all. It's it can't always be the victim's fault. We teach our kids not to hit, you know. We teach our kids not to steal, and. To a point. To a point, but we don't. But to we, a point. We, we've never, we don't blame when, when when your kid is caught picking taking something. You don't say that's a gr that's great. He deserved it. No, you know, but the, but uh, this is where I believe this is where the genius of the Catholic system comes in. 
Because even though the Catholic Church is pro-life when it comes to the unborn, mm -hmm. a lot of people are not aware that the Catholic Church supports capital punishment. And I cannot wrap my head around this. This is something that I struggle with every time that I read about it. Mm -hmm. But you read the Catechism of the Catholic Church. They say that capital punishment is a legitimate exercise of the state's power. Now, there are many provisos in there <laughs> saying that it has to be a functioning democracy. There has to be a burden of proof. There's blah, blah, blah. But they say that the state, in order to keep order, can exercise the penalty of capital punishment. That's from the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Yeah. I cannot... That is something I cannot wrap my head around. But... With Catholics, most of the time... It's never an either-or. It's a both-and. So they can be pro-life... And they can be both for... And capital punishment. And these are the dialogues that I think we have to have. Uh, and I noticed Champ giving me the wrap-up sign... So I am going to skip forward, um, and I'm going to jump into the, our final section, which is what can you do as a parent? <coughs> uh, so options. If you don't like the curriculum that's being taught at the public schools, I encourage you, place your child in a Catholic school. Place your child in a Catholic school because they are teaching this curriculum right. <coughs> um, the other option is go to a private school. That may be beyond the means of many parents because there is an additional cost involved, okay? Um, so that's not for everyone, but if you feel that strongly about it, uh, there are people there who are pulling their children from school, or pulling their children from schools, who are pulling their children from these classes. Um, on our website, there's going to be a link to a website called campaignlifecoalition.com. Uh, there are about a dozen activities on this website that you can partake in as a parent uh, there are also opt-out forms provided for you on this website if you wish to take your child out of the new sex ed classes which you can present to your school um, there are also a list of some interesting court activities that are taking place where there is a father who is suing a school because he was not consulted on uh, JR you mentioned this earlier on in your mm -hmm. in your uh, uh, statements where uh, you know, they can't consult every parent, but this parent is saying, I was not consulted. I want my child taken out of the class. Uh, I, I, I take a little issue to these links being on the site. Oh, it's a little hold partisan. On. Hold on, hold on. Uh, I would encourage everyone, do not pull your children from sex ed class. Don't do it. You have a responsibility to engage with your children this new curriculum. Okay? You are the primary teacher of your children. Parents are the primary teacher, not the school board, not the government of Ontario, not Kathleen Wynne, not whoever came up with this curriculum. You are the primary teacher of your children. By pulling them from this program, which you do have an option to do it, by pulling them from this program, you are doing yourself a disservice. And, then so, and the children. And the children, yes. And society at large. There's a triple disservice happening here, okay? You are putting uneducated people into society, and you are living in your own ignorance about what is happening in the world. You need to be there to guide your children. So even if you don't agree with what is going on, put your kids in a Catholic school. Go online. You can read the... Uh, you can read the Catholic bishops teaching aid for Catholic teachers. It's based in reason and rationality. It makes sense. And the reason why it makes sense is because faith and science come from the same source. They have to be in harmony. If they're not, something's wrong with the science or something's wrong with the faith. That's the suggestions that I offer for everyone. Uh, thank you, Gino. <coughs> Closing thoughts. Does anyone want to participate in some close in their closing thoughts, Enza? <laughs> Marco, closing thoughts. Sixty seconds on a closing thought. I'm considering packing up the whole family and moving to some remote part of Africa <laughs> because uh -huh. your two daughters <laughs> and and taking my chances with the malaria and trying to you just need get back to a more agrarian, you yeah, know, yeah. medieval <laughs> existence where. You know, you just farm. 
Cast yeah. iron pants. That's right. Cast, Cast iron pants. Cast iron pants. Yes, with what the heavy skeleton from? Big V, go ahead, Big V. For, for, for the daughters. <laughs> Cast iron pants. Oh, go geez. ahead, Big V. Uh, hey, um, Do you have anything to say? <laughs> that's enough of that. Yeah, <laughs> Honestly, really I, I didn't have a, I didn't have anything on for the opening. I have practically nothing for the closing. I'm surprised you don't have anything because you have direct experience with a teacher in the system. Yeah, but my wife teaches kindergarten, so Oh yeah, she wouldn't she wouldn't be part of this. If there's any anything that she <coughs> in the curriculum that she has to <coughs> take part in is got to be like the minimalist of uh I think, uh, it, I think it officially starts in grade 1. So I don't, I don't think she has to nothing. deal with it. Yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Thank you, Big V. Gino 60 seconds, closing words? Uh, simply, I want to say that parents, you are the primary educator of your children. Do not shirk your responsibility. You need to be engaged. You need to, whatever your opinion is, you need to make your voice heard. Um, you cannot bury your head in the sand. Uh, as I said, the links will be up on the website for those who want to use them. I encourage you not to use them. We try not to present a biased argument here, but those people should have the opportunity to have their voice heard. I encourage you not to do it. This is a good thing. This curriculum that has come out is a good thing. You need to take advantage of it. You need to work with your children. You need to be the primary (laughs) educator of your children. Thank you, Gino. JR, parting words? Uh, I I agree. Um, If you are angry angry at this curriculum, it's because you're afraid of it. And it's because... It's teaching. It's saying things you've never heard before, it, and and the primary tool against fear and ignorance is education. Look at the look at the discussion that we've had here today. Jr. has made no bones about it. He is a he is a uh, a pro choice person. I am unabashedly a pro life person. We're coming at this from two completely different perspectives, but we're meeting on middle ground. We there is more that unites us then divides us on these particular issues. We can have a we we can have a dialogue about this and hopefully get to a place that's better for everyone in the end. So you don't have to bury your head in the sand and dig your heels in and say I'm right and what I say goes. I'm sorry, JR, go ahead. All right. This curriculum is giving you tools. You do not have the tools alone to solely educate a child about sex. You were never provided them uh, in, in the beginning. Use the curriculum and le- educate yourself and your child. The onslaught of, of sex in society, you cannot do this alone. And the, take the government's hand on this and work together with them. They are not the enemy. They are an ally. Trust me on this. You may not agree with everything, but just because you disagree with 1% of it does not mean 100% of it is wrong. And currently, all the political parties in Ontario are in favor of this. Except for that really young son of a bitch that uh, doesn't like it. Austin? Well, well uh. yes, but his party leader has said even if he gets in power, he's not repealing it. He flip-flopped on it. So basically, these reforms are here to stay. you got to live with them. And this you got to deal with it. This is good. The fact that... Educated, progressive, conservative people see the the benefit in this education is is, is endearing. It, it it gives me a little bit of hope. Well, you're very welcome, Jr. <laughs> thank you, Jr. <laughs> thank you. All right, I want to thank everyone for joining the roundtable. My guests, Marco, Big V, Gino, Jr., and our special guest Enza, joining us uh, on the guest chair. Uh, don't forget, uh, for more information, uh, visit our website, www.crewroundtable.com. You can also tweet us at Crew Roundtable. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, at the hashtag AskTheCrew. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Crew Roundtable, brought to you by the crewroundtable.com and the five guys that put it together. Subscribe to our show through iTunes, Google Music, Stitcher Radio, or the TuneIn Music app. And if you're addicted to shopping on Amazon, use our website link found at crewroundtable.com and click through so we can get a good kickback.
Tune in next time, where you might hear Gino say... Uh, uh, how, how do you follow that bullshit? See you next time. <laughs>